it to be engaging and short, uh, right? We know attention spans are not long for any of us. Um, and so we really wanted to make sure to respond to that. Um, and that's why we really chose to go through this video-based kind of short animated uh, route. So I'll give you some more information about what that looks like. We looked at the literature um, and we also looked at where kids were at in terms of technology. So no surprises here. Most of them are um, have access to a smartphone fully 95% um, as a, according to research just done last year. We also know that uh, almost over 90% of them really say that they're online at least several times a day, if not constantly, uh, which was their wording, which cracked me up. And that of the 13 to 18 year olds, so skewing a little bit older, uh, we know the vast majority of them have been been going online to look up health information. So we know that if we could provide a trusted resource, that it would be a place where they would come to, to get answers to their questions, to get more information that maybe they're not getting at home from families or from um, caregivers, and they may not be getting at schools given to, you know, political climates or lack of mandates and requirements, those kinds of things. So this is the partnership uh, that is a maze. It's between us at Advocates for Youth, our dear colleagues at Answer, as well as Youth Tech Health. Um, we have private foundation funding for this particular project from the West Wind Foundation, um, and we really decided to look at what are all the topics that middle schoolers really need by first, of course, going to the National Sexuality Education Standards, but then going beyond that, really recognizing that if young people were going to be coming to watch videos, we didn't have to worry about it being something that could only be shown in schools. We didn't have to worry about those requirements that you know indicate what we can teach in schools. We could be free to go above and beyond that. And that's certainly where we've gone. So just to give you a sense of the different topics that we cover, um, we use different kinds of animation and we try to hit lots of different I want to see sexual Ours orientation and gender. Like microbytes. Um, our videos tend to be in about the two to four minute range. Uh, so it's something that we know that it's just a really tiny piece of information that we're giving, which is why we're trying to do so many of them so that people when they come tend to watch a few of them as opposed to just kind of watching one longer video. So I'll just give you a sense of what some of the different ones are out there. We've got over 80 videos. Um, we released what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up their website right now. Actually, let me just pull it up right now. Let me see. I know you guys can't see this amaze.org. Does it still exist? Oh, it does. It does. Oh, they've gotten an upgrade since then. Maybe we'll take a look at that. Brian says, I will say this, gays statistically become more active at a much younger age than their straight counterparts. Yes. Well, I do. I do absolutely. Agree. Well, yeah, I do agree with that with the with men, especially Brian. Um, I think that that's very true. And again, I'm not I'm not necessarily opposed to like teaching like the mechanics and how to do things safely. But that's that's not what they're doing is the thing. That's not what they're doing. George Andrevaso Nunez says there are studies that claim that exposure to sexual content can make puberty come early. That's what he's asking. I'm not sure of their validity. I don't I, I mean, I don't know. This is not an area I'm expert. I'm an expert in at all. It does kind of seem odd to me, though. I mean, OK, let me just say flat out. I was exposed to sexual content at a very at a young age. And my puberty didn't come early. So that's my lived experience. It's not broadly applicable to the general population. Um, I, I don't I don't think I was like damaged by being exposed to it at all, to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe it was a little bit too soon for some of it. I just like the reason I got exposed to it is I happened to like volunteer at a public library and they had like this whole section on sex books. And so I was curious, I guess. Um, but like yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't like I don't I don't necessarily think that I don't I don't know that that's true. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway. This one every other week. It's been really fun and a really aggressive timeline. So here's some examples of different videos. We've got on um, puberty on um, the lower half of the screen is on healthy relationships. It'll also just give you a sense of the different kinds of animation. At the top is sexual orientation. Oh. At the bottom is personal safety. Um, and I will tell you in the personal safety oh, is probably God. one of our most. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Just so you guys know, I'm scrolling around their current website. And I went to, we'll, we'll look at some videos from their current website, too. I do want to watch this webinar, though. But, like, the very first video under gender identity on their current website, not the one that's on the screen right now, is what are pronouns? And it has had over 66,000 views. And then the second one is gender exists on a spectrum.
So we'll watch some of those, but I want to watch this webinar first. Videos. Um, it, it's on pornography. Oh, and so it. Hang on. I got a super chat coming in. I want to make sure I can read it. Hang on. There it goes. NBTTL1 says, I was sexually abused as a child. My puberty hit about two years before my peers. But that might, I mean, and I'm so sorry about what happened to you. I really am. That might not have been a function. Like, I mean, I know people like it, it, it's a, like it, just because that happened doesn't mean that triggered puberty. I don't think maybe it does. I don't know. But I just think I don't know. I don't know. I guess I, I guess where I'm confused is I don't know necessarily why it matters. Sorry to hear about what happened to you. Really talks about the um, fantasy of pornography. Not why it matters about what happened to you, why it matters about when puberty hits. And how that's not real life or real bodies or how real people interact. And it's something that a lot of sex educators have been looking for that often can't get into school-based sex education, but we know is a big need for young people. So just wanted to point out. So I just want to tell you guys, they had 12 million views on their YouTube channel three years ago. They now have over 60 million views. So this is making them a lot of money. That that topic is available um, in the personal safety topic area. And then sexually transmitted diseases and HIV and pregnancy oh and reproduction God. as well. Um, so you'll see lots of different topics, lots of different videos. We may my just have to go to their current website. It's crazy. Is to play a few videos for you. Um, and I tried to chunk up the information so we'd have points at which we'll stop. And I we literally may just have to go to the current version of their website because like, I'm, I want to watch some of their current videos. I also want to see what she has to show us, though. Filipino white boy says, do you think either Razor Fist or Sticks Hexenhammer sold out to the establishment? I don't think they have, but I'm curious what you think. I don't really uh, like interact or watch that much from Razor Fist. Um, my impression on my very limited view is that no, I don't think he has. And the same with Sticks Hexenhammer. I, and I haven't watched Sticks. And I, I, I don't watch anyone. This is not shade at, at either of those two people. I don't watch anyone except for Karen Ann Harlow's and that's for libertarian drama and getting ready for the convention and all that stuff. Um, but I, I, but, but I like Sticks Hexenhammer a lot. I think Sticks Hexenhammer is who he is. And I do not believe he's sold out. I think he's doing his own thing. And I think, I think that he's great. I really do. I think he's so, so, so smart. So smart can respond to any questions or we can chat about anything that you're interested in. Um, a little bit more holistic information. As I said, we've got over 80 videos and counting. There'll be one released um, tomorrow of oh, this week. Top three um, videos. Which will be exciting. Masturbation is normal. About 19 million views and counting, which is great. And here are top three most popular videos. I mean, any masturbation is normal. The most popular but... one is on masturbation with 2.4 million views. Um, and then boys in puberty. I just, I'm always mystified by that one. And then the next most popular one is on gender expression. It's hmm. uh, expressing myself my way. And it's actually the first one that I'm going to show you. I'll tell you that it oh, has good. a really snappy song to it. It's one of our videos that skews well, a little bit younger. It uses it? penguins. It a song. Um, but I just wanted to play it for you so you could get an example of um, what some of our videos are like. So if you haven't been able to turn up your speakers, make sure to do so so you can hear the song. No matter how you're born, we each have the style. I'll tell you in a while exactly what I like. Ariana and Renee, they both are born girls. They go into their changing rooms. Ariana loves twirl. That's not for Renee. Pink will not do. All girls don't wear dresses. They wear pants, too. As Renee lost her mind, what's running through her head? Ariana can fix this. No is what she said. When you put it on, you do a little groove. You know you got a move. That's how you know you got it right. This is Bryce and Jason, they both are born boys. They go into their changing rooms. Bryce jumps out with joy. Jason has a different idea. The sweater is where it's at. Bryce has to fix this. Here, try this or that. Wait just one second. Don't tell him how to dress. Ariana knows this. Only Jason can express. This is me, who I am. See me in the colors. Me like no other. Originality. No matter how you're born, we each have the style. I'll tell you in a while exactly what I like. Donna and Charles, one girl and one boy. They go into their changing rooms. Charles is feeling coy. 
Others are thrilled with the look, but Charles is quite unhappy. Let's try this again. Yeah, this is snappy. There it is. Some are Trans. confused. They just don't understand. There Charles it is. Now Charles is certain. Ariana's her biggest fan. Some might keep their distance, but Change others your name will to... come around. Come on over. Did you guys notice that Charles's name changed to Charlotte as well? Isn't that nice? For Dala, show us what you found. Dala had something on, but is not quite convinced. She wants to try again, yet she still gives a wince. Nope, not right either. Why can't she decide? Sometimes it takes time, only she can find her stride. Dala presents an outfit. The new name is Darren. Now everything new feels name right. New name is Darren, the what the fuck? He's sharing. When you put it on, you do a little groove. You know you gotta move. That's how you know you gotta get right. This is me, who I am. Colors, like no Here we have Skylar, born a boy or girl, not interested in the girl look, won't give the boy. Why did it stop? And it oh. isn't one of those. This is a unique look from Skylar's head to toe. It's a non binary look. It's a fucking non binary look. Oh my god. That's how you know you got it right. This is me, who I am. See me in the colors, me like no other. Oh, this is me, who I am. See me in full color, me like no other. Right. Is anyone else having some feelings right now? I'm having some feelings. And listen, I need to preface this. I don't give him flying F if you're trans. I don't give a flying F if you're non-binary. I don't care. What the fuck did we just watch? This is for middle schoolers. That, that it, They are using cartoons to make this seem cool. This is not about, this is not about kids discovering who they really are. This is not about that at all. I like I do not understand why these people are so quick to reinforce gender stereotypes. Guess what? I didn't like pink growing up. I never even wore pink until like two years ago. What did we just watch? They made a whole cartoon song. No, it says he beat cancer, and he's pretty sure that song brought them back. Brian says, now, what, what, so I'm, I'm dead inside. That's great. Steven says, no penguins were groomed or indoctrinated in the making of this. Guys, we are going to watch so many more of these videos. This is now turned, what the hell? What did we just watch? Bill says, why do kids need to be exploited to drag culture, let alone a glorification of transsexual identity before puberty? or legal age of consent. They just substituted kids with penguins. Patrice says it's mind control. Emphasize says, so non-binary is country hick in overalls. Yes, apparently non-binary is country hick. Apparently that's true. AD says, you have to be fundamentally tarted. Excellent word choice, AD. Not to understand to whatever extent it is, there is a link between your sex and gender that inform the other. This is the problem with social construction view, no guiding principle. This is pre Burlington. It is. It is. Guys, this is just the first video. We not only have the rest of this webinar to get through, we have a whole other treasure troves of video. Let's hang on to our hats. Let's keep going. Hunker down. I'm going to text Victor to bring me a cider. Right, I need a drink. Here, and I'd love to, if folks wouldn't mind, just putting in some reaction. 